Hello and welcome to today's lecture about debt financing. So first of all, let's introduce the word debt. What does debt mean? Debt is actually an amount or a sum of money borrowed by one party, by one entity from another. So if we move on to try and understand debt within the realm of healthcare organizations, we can say that debt indicates that the healthcare organization has borrowed a certain sum of money and promises to repay that money in the future under clearly defined terms and conditions. Debt can consist of term loan, debentures, commercial papers, overdrafts, public deposits, and corporate deposits. Regardless of the size of the organization, we can say that all healthcare businesses need some capital to acquire the facilities, the equipment, the technologies, and other assets that are needed to run the business and the clinical operations. The traditional financing sources, sources of capital, are debt and equity. So in the context of financial management, capital represents the funds used to acquire land, building, infrastructure, equipment, and technology. Without capital, healthcare businesses would not have the physical resources that are needed to provide patient services, and the financial management team must also manage their working capital, which is their current assets minus their liabilities. Indeed, in the corporate finance, the management of current assets accounts is very important and it's commonly referred to as working capital management. Through strategic healthcare investment management, healthcare companies and organizations can outsource maintaining financial operations that provide quality patient care. Simply put, capital is allocated in a free market economy by price. The organizations most able to pay are in the best position to obtain capital. So those that create the greatest value can actually obtain capital. The interest rate on the debt security is the cost of that capital. And there are four primary factors that impact the general level of interest rates. We have investment opportunities. We have time preferences for consumption. We have risk. And finally, we have inflation. Debt is generally classified as either short term or long term so short term one year or shorter long term over one year and these are going to be of course depending on maturity and when we refer to debt maturity this refers actually to the date the contract between issuers and investors ends the major sources of long-term debt are term loans and bonds the borrower in the context of term loans makes a series of payments to the lender. So the payments are going to be principal plus interest. The lender is going to be generally a commercial bank or a financial institution. Generally, term loans are going to be privately placed. Their typical maturities can span from two to seven years, and they are going to be having either a fixed interest rate or a variable interest rate. The advantages of term loans over public offerings or bonds, first of all, speed, they are faster to acquire. Second of all, flexibility, and finally, lower issuance costs. The main disadvantages are going to be the maturity limits and the size limits. So bonds, what are bonds? Well, um, Unfortunately, not these bonds that we are going to be talking about. We are talking about something a little bit more boring for you, probably, but it's very important for financial managers. So bonds are a way for healthcare organizations and other organizations actually to raise capital. Bonds represent the debts of issuers such as companies or governments. And these debts are sliced up and sold to investors in smaller units. So they are similar to term loans, but they generally are sold with face values 
of $1,000 or $5,000 to the general public. So there are many buyers. Many people can actually buy these. Different types of bonds. We can have the government bonds or treasury bonds. These are issued and sold by the national treasury. We have the corporate bonds that are issued by investor-owned businesses. We have the muni or the municipal bonds that are issued by governments and governmental agencies, including healthcare financing agencies, other than federal agencies. Government bonds are generally assumed to be the safest, while some corporate bonds are regarded as the riskiest of the commonly used bond types. Most bonds are going to have 20 to 30 years maturities, but shorter and longer maturities are also used. Generally, they have a fixed interest rate, but many have a floating or variable interest rate. The decision to issue or to buy fixed rate debt or floating rate debt depends on several factors, including the current level of interest rates and expectations about future levels. Of course, under corporate bond types, you can find actually different categories. You have mortgage bonds, you have debentures, and you have subordinated debentures. And of course, mortgage bonds generally mean that there are real assets that are pledged as security. The main advantages of debt financing, first of all, the profits accrue to owners, not creditors. Tax deductibility of interest and tax exempt debt lead to lower cost of capital. Also, the creditors have no control rights. In general, there are some exceptions to this, of course. The disadvantages of debt financing. First of all, principal and interest are a fixed charge that has to be paid and failure to do so can actually lead to bankruptcy. Debt financing can also increase the risk of the business and hence the cost of capital and covenants, contracts and agreements might restrict managerial actions. Thank you for attending this lecture. If you have any questions, any remarks, any suggestions or anything that you want to comment about, you have the comment section below to do so. Thank you again. See you soon and carpe diem.